Hey, future respiratory therapist. So I got an email request from, um, I'm assuming a young man by the name of Kyle, who is curious how to use the formulas that some of you and probably most of you have learned on how to manipulate the ventilator to fix a blood gas. Okay. And so uh, what we're talking about here is typically when we're fixing a blood gas. Now the, the, the email talks about changing CO2 and changing O2. I'm going to split that up into two different videos. Okay. Cause it's going to get too long if I put them together. Okay. So we're first going to talk about ventilation. When we say ventilation, we're talking about the removal of CO2 in regards to a blood gas. Okay. So when you look at this blood gas, it's obvious that this person is not effectively removing CO2. We have a uncompensated respiratory acidosis causing a pH of 7.31 and our CO2 is high. Now you draw this blood gas, okay, and you need to make some changes, okay? The patient is currently on volume control AC, a rate of 14, a tidal volume of 450. The patient is not breathing above the ventilator and that gives us a minute ventilation of 6.3 okay now how did you get 6.3 Joe simply most important formula in my opinion that you need to know is minute ventilation equals respiratory rate times tidal volume if you understand that then you can manipulate that formula three different ways you can take a tidal volume and a minute ventilation and establish a tidal volume I mean a, a minute ventilation you can you can do minute ventilation divided by rate to get a tidal volume you can do minute ventilation divided by tidal volume to get a respiratory rate Okay, so just plug the two of the three numbers you know in, make the other one an X, and you can solve for any of those values. Okay, this formula is so vitally important to being able to quickly assess and understand your patients in ICU setting. Now, when I wrap this up, after I answer Kyle's question, I'm going to come back and I'm going to tell you probably the most important thing you need to understand when it comes to making multiple changes on the vent at one time instead of just one. Because what we do know here is that we need to get that patient CO2 down, right? So to get the patient CO2 down, we can either increase respiratory rate or increase tidal volume, okay? And there's formulas to tell you exactly what to increase it to, all right? And here they are on the board right behind me here. Let's go my seat back a little bit. If you know your patient's respiratory rate and you know their CO2 and you know you wanna get their CO2 down or you want to change it to another level, then you set this formula up like this. Known rate multiplied times known CO2 divided by your desired CO2, and guess what? You will get a new respiratory rate that, assuming nothing else changes, should give you approximately what this CO2 number here comes out to be, okay? We're going to do this together on this example right here, okay? Same thing with tidal volume, okay? If you know your tidal volume, and you know your CO2, then you can divide that by a desired CO2, and it'll tell you what new tidal volume is needed to get that desired level of CO2, okay? Now, just like those formulas, if you'll use the minute ventilation in place of respiratory rate or tidal volume, such as this, I know my minute ventilation, and I know my CO2, and I know what I want my CO2 to be, then multiply your known minute ventilation times your known CO2 divided by your desired CO2 and you will get the new required minute ventilation to drive your CO2 towards your desired CO2. Okay, now here's my first step when we're talking about these formulas. If you ever do one of these formulas and let's say you need to get your CO2 from 50 and we want to get it down to 40 and you mix these numbers up, then your answer will not make sense. You know when you start this formula, my CO2 is 50, I got to get it to 40, which means my rate is going to have to increase. If my rate, if I do this formula and my rate tells me that I want 14, but I should now go to 10, you did it wrong. Because obviously if you turn the rate down, your CO2 is going to go up. And in this case, we're trying to get from 50 and we're going to plug 40 in here in just a second. Okay. So you got to understand the way these changes will affect your blood gas. And when the answer doesn't make sense, you probably got your formulas mixed up somehow. Okay. So what we're going to do here is go through the motions here. We're going to practice each of these three formulas with the numbers we have over here. And then we're going to finish up with the minute ventilation. And we're going to show you how you can use that formula 
to come up with some different numbers, okay? So you're not constrained to just one change. Now, I will tell you this. On your board exams, it will be one change at a time. You're not ever going to have an answer that says increase respiratory rate and increase tidal volume. Okay, that's never going to be. If you have a CO2 problem on your blood gas, the answer is going to be, depending on the, on, on the situation, it may be rate, it may be tidal volume, it may be removing mechanical dead space, but it will not be both of those at the same time. Okay, so I want to make that clear. This is more of a practical, when you're working, critically thinking at the bedside um, video, as it is um, as much about your, your, your upcoming board exams for whenever those may be for you. Okay, so, all right, so let's just, let's talk through the numbers here, okay? So, we've already talked about our blood gas, we've already talked about our settings, now we're going to start plugging them in, okay? So, the first thing we're going to do is I want to know if I want to get this patient's CO2, which I know is 50, okay? I want to get it down to 40, okay? Now... I already know that my known respiratory rate is 14, and all I do have to do now is the math, okay? So we take 14, take 14, multiply it times the CO2 of 50, and we divide it by 40. That tells us that our new rate to achieve a CO2 of 40 should be 17.5 so we're going to round that up to 18 we're not going to go 17 because that would give us still give us a higher co2 of 40. if you went 17 just know your co2 would probably be a little higher than 40. if you go 18 know it may be a little lower than 40. it doesn't matter we're just going to go 18 for the sake of of this example okay so so we can fix this by increasing our rate from 14 to 18 but let's just for the sake of this say that the patient has severe asthma and you want to give them as long of an exhalation time as possible. And so increasing the rate by four is not an option. Okay? So it's just, just we don't want to do that right now. Okay? So let's see what the tidal volume brings us to. Okay? We know our known CO2 is 50. We know our desired CO2 is 40. And we know our tidal volume is currently 0.45 liters, okay? So let's do the math. If we do 0.450 times our known CO2 of 50, and we divide that by 40, this tells us that our new tidal volume should be 563 milliliters or 0.563 liters, okay? So we need to increase our tidal volume by, 100 and, by 113 mLs. We can leave our rate at 14, we can increase our tidal volume to 563, and that will get us a CO2 close to 40, okay? When we talked about the respiratory rate, we're going to increase our rate to 18, leave our tidal volume at 450, that should also do the trick, okay? But what if 563 is 30 mLs above this person's high-end tidal volume? Then we don't want to do that, do we? Okay, let's say that their ideal tidal volume on the top end of it is 530 mLs. Well, you do not want to increase it to 563, right? That's going to put the risk at barotrauma, over distension of the lungs. We don't want that, right? So let's do it another way. Let's see what happens when we calculate it for the minute ventilation, okay? Again, we know our CO2 is currently 50. We know our desired CO2 is 40. And we know our known VE here, our known minute ventilation, we've already stated it down here, was 6.3. What did I get 6.3? 14 times 0.45 is 6.3. Respiratory rate times tidal volume tells me our minute ventilation is 6.3. Okay? So we just plug 6.3 right here. And we do the math, just like we did on the other ones, right? So you're going to get 6.3 times 50 divided by 40. And you get 7.9. Okay, so let's just round this up to 8. Okay, 8 liters per minute. This is LPMs. 8 liters per minute is the desired minute ventilation. 
that you should be shooting for to get this patient's CO2 from 50 down to 40. Okay? Now, this is where you get to critically think. Okay? How do you achieve 8 liters per minute, minute volume with, without going too high on your rate and without going too high on your tidal volume? How do you find a balance in between there that will be better suited for this patient? Okay? We already said 563 is too high of a tidal volume. Rate of 18 isn't a terrible rate, but severe obstructive lung disease, we don't, we don't, we'd like to keep it cl as close to 14 as possible. Okay, so let's not try to increase it by adding four extra breaths in there, which is going to turn your take your total cycle time way down. Right now, they have less time to exhale. So, so let's find let's find a balance in between here. Well, just easy numbers. I can do this multiple different ways. Okay, so I'm going to erase this bottom section right here because we know we have our number. We want. Eight liters per minute, right? Well, we can do that a bunch of different ways. Let me get a new mark. We can do that a bunch of different... Well, that's not a new marker. <laughs> so eight liters per minute, right? So we can do that in various ways, okay? Let's say we want to go with a tidal volume of 500. That's in the normal range for this patient, okay? then we just choose 500, 0.5 liters. Well, if you set the patient on 500, 0.5 liters, and you're given eight liters per minute, then now you just do your minute ventilation formula. Okay, now you just gotta come in here and say, okay, if VE equals respiratory rate times tidal volume, right, then we know eight equals X, times 0.500, right? Divide both sides by 0.500, and you'll get 16. So this would give us a respiratory rate of 16, okay? Which achieves what we wanted to do. We didn't want to go to 18 because that was too high. Do we have to add two more breaths in? Sure, but we're also going up on the tidal volume. Together, that gives us our eight liters, which will give us our 40 on our CO2. What do you want? What if you want to go to a respiratory rate of 15? Okay. Let's say let's say you only want to add one breath. Okay. Well, now just divide eight divided by 15 equals 0.533, right at right at the high end of our max tidal volume range. So you could choose 15 and 533 for this patient. 15, just 15 and 530. And that will also drive you down towards your CO2 of 40. Okay? Does that make sense? I hope so, because when you learn how to use and manipulate these formulas, you can uh, impress a lot of people by making a change and then uh, knowing what that change is going to result in. Knowing pretty positively that this is going to get us down there. Okay, you can kind of stop, you can stop wasting time. You know, if you want to get this patient CO2 down to 40, and you do just want to go with a rate of 18. But let's say the doc says up it to 16. Well, you know that's not going to get you down there because you know this formula. You know where we want our CO2 to be. 40? Let's go 18. Okay? Or for, for, have fun with it. Make a prediction on a blood gas and see how how how, how mind-blowing people are when they're around you, right? Because you understand the way these numbers work together. Okay, now here's what I want to show you, and this is what I want you to be most aware of, okay, is how to use these formulas in this manner. Mostly this is just a minute ventilation conversation here, okay? So let me find my eraser. Let me change this. Now, I'm just going to stay with the numbers I have here just because I already have them up there, okay? So let's say that uh, you're taking care of this patient and uh, the resident comes in and says, I want to get their CO2 down. Okay, I want to get it down. So I'm going to increase their respiratory rate to 20. Okay, now we've already done the math. We know that's going to be excessive, right? But let's just, just for example sake, let me just, just make an example here, okay? Or you know what, we'll go 18. 
Right? Hell, the truth is they'll increase it to 16, and it won't get there, will it? Right? Now, we know that if we take our rate up to 16, that our CO2 will go down. Okay? But at the same time, he says, you know what? I'm kind of concerned about barotrauma, so let's turn the tidal volume down. And we're just going to turn it down to 400. Okay? Now, this is where I like my patient. Okay, now this is somebody who has no idea how mechanical ventilation interacts with blood gases, first of all. Okay, because if you do your formula, your minute ventilation formula, and you do 16 times 0.400, you will get 6.4, which is the exact same place we started. So get a blood gas in an hour and come back and show me the exact same results, right? This is when you got to say, hold on, doc. Uh, or hold on RT or hold on whoever it is you're talking to. This is when you got to say, I, I get I get this. I, I'm, I'm okay with this. Okay. Um, but we didn't do anything to fix what we're trying to do, what we're trying to fix. Everything's going to be the same because our minute ventilation is essentially the same. So if you want to take the tidal volume down to 400, you need to take this rate up to 20. And that will give us a minute ventilation that will successfully get our CO2 down to 40. Why? Because I did the formula and I know how to work them. Okay? So a lot of numbers in there you can play with to make your patient as comfortable as possible. Remember, always make the ventilator breathe like the machine any chance you can. Don't try to make the patient breathe like you want the vent to do. Always approach every vent change with the idea of, how is this going to fit my patient? Is it going to fix my problems? The health problems I need to fix? The blood, the acute um, respiratory acidosis? Sure. Is it going to lead to a bunch of asynchrony because the patient doesn't like breathing 20 times a minute? Maybe. So find another way to do it. Okay. Hey Kyle, I hope this, I hope this helps. Uh, I'm going to do the other video answering the PAO2 question. Okay. Best wishes guys.